today we're going to be talking about Ombu there. Hey folks, Passboys here. I'm Clyde. This is Tommy. Cheers! On today's episode, we'll go over how I changed my air conditioning compressor into an onboard air compressor. Can I do this to my Suzuki Samurai? You can do this to any vehicle with AC. Really? Will my AC still work? Well, no, but that's the trade-off. I never used mine anyhow. You gotta show me how you did it. So this is how I did it. So this is the factory AC pump. First thing I needed to do was get rid of all those lines. But what I did save was the connectors on the ends. So what I ended up doing was I took the old connectors and I welded them to these quarter inch national pipe thread fittings. That was a little bit tricky. If you can't do that, I'm sure you could take it to a welding shop or somewhere that can do that for you. After that, pretty easy. Right from the beginning of the setup, <clears throat> air filter, keep all that nastiness out. Staged it down to quarter inch national pipe thread or MPT. Went into uh, air oiler. Now what this does is on your normal air conditioning unit, it's a closed system, and inside the refrigerant gas there is lubricant inside and that keeps this lubricated. It's not internally lubricated. So if you're going to do this conversion, this is a must. Now on the other side, on the outside, I have it come out. I put in a couple of elbows just to get this stuff out of the way from the distributor. It would have been a nightmare to do any work on the distributor afterwards if I didn't route it somewhere else. Now this here is, is the regulator switch. Now the way it's wired in, it's pretty simple. In the fuse panel, just hook up to, you'll see it'll either say auxiliary or ignition or a short form for ignition, IGN or something like that. You can just put it right in there. Don't worry about fusing it at that spot. Just run your wire up and run it into this. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like inside, I'll just take this and open it up. Now it's a really simple, simple way of wiring things up. And you can, you can pick this up at your local industrial parts dealers or any sort of place like that. Now, the way these work is normally you have a motor running off of this circuit here. So I've just bridged that over because I'm just trying to complete a circuit here. The way, the way it works is when it reaches 150 PSI, I mean, it's all adjustable, so I have it set for 160. Once it reaches 160 PSI, it pushes up on the springs and it turns it off. Now, once it drops back down to 120, it turns back on. It just completes the circuit. So right after that, I put my fuse in. Very important to have. You don't want to blow anything else out on this. And just to make it easy, I put it on the factory plug. For the air conditioning compressor, now, the beauty of this whole circuit is you only have to run a power wire. The magnet on the clutch of the compressor is grounded, so no need to run any ground wires. Now I'm just going to put this back on here, and I'll show you some important things in this setup, and what messed up on me, and what I need to fix today. So, just before the regulator, may be hard to see, but right in here, there's just an inline one-way check valve. That just stops any of the air pressure coming back and blowing through the pump itself. It's just a little diaphragm that opens and closes as the air is being pumped that way. It doesn't allow it to go back this way. Where I had a big problem is a lot of heat is generated in this area, and I went right to a plastic airline, and as you can see, it melted. That's what I need to fix today. Now this is a really, really easy, cheap fix for you. It's a cheap fix, but it's a good fix and it's a permanent one. 
This is uh, some 3 8 copper tubing I picked up at the local hardware store. The good thing about copper is it disperses heat very well. So I run a few feet of this. Unfortunately, I had to buy about 25 feet. They didn't sell it in smaller lengths. I can run about two, three feet of this off of that main line, get rid of the heating issues just before the plastic line. So well, here we go, taking off the old fitting that mates to, to that plastic line. And I'm gonna put on a different fitting, one that mates to the copper line. May look the same, but they're slightly different. Now this is a uh, national pipe thread, so generally not gonna need to use any thread sealer or Teflon or anything like that. Just make sure you have it nice and snug. Okay, next what you're gonna wanna do is bend your pipe up. So I've got a section cut here, but it's not perfect. So what you wanna do, start bending. Now, another great thing about this copper pipe is how malleable it is really bends very easily but just try not to bend it too quick in one spot then you'll crimp it but if you just do nice long bends then you'll find it works really really well once it looks pretty good grab your fitting these are compression fittings so what they do is slip over like that and then find yourself in and try to push it right to the bottom of that and then thread it on holding it in and as you tighten it down that ring the sleeve pushes down against the copper line which is very malleable and squishes it and makes a seal Beauty. Okay, now on this end, what I have is another one of those compression fittings, but with an elbow as well, going to a compression fitting for the plastic airline. I'll just go ahead and put that on. Now, I gotta cut this so I can put it into the compression fit. Now I can just go ahead and trim this line. And with that line trim shorter, pull this out. Careful not to lose that little brass wedge. Flip the nut over, brass wedge in. Line in. And we are in business. Now where it goes from there is totally up to you. The way I did it is I ran it down and I followed the brake lines. Zip tied it to all the brake lines all the way back. Once I got to the rear axle where the brake lines drop out, I just went in behind the bumper. Now, on my setup, I used the bumper as an air tank. You don't have to do that. You could run it inside the cab. You could put an air tank, an air reservoir. You could just feed it right off of this system. What you do need to do after this, though, is you need to regulate it out. So you have to have an air dryer and a regulator. The air dryer is necessary because you're putting oil into the system. So you just want to remove that before you put it into any of your air tools and into your tires especially. You don't really want to be pumping oil constantly into your tires. That stuff will build up and yeah, it's just not good. Especially the, the water. If you get water in your tires and you live in a place like Canada, if that freezes overnight, now you've got a big, sharp, heavy thing toss it around on the inside of your tire to chew it all the bits. So you could pretty much do any any which way you want. You can run it straight off the line, you can run it into a tank, have that as a reservoir so that you have a lot more 
volume coming out, right? So you won't run out of air quickly and you won't be running your pump constantly. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you guys how I did that in the next episode. I'll show you how I ran it into the bumper, the bumper that I built, and I'll show you where it comes out. Thanks for tuning in. Next, we'll finish up the onboard air. Got lots of other stuff coming. But. But what? Tell us what you want to see. Leave a comment below, like this video, and subscribe! subscribe.